I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. And I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I didn't time my um, message this morning, so I'm going to really dive in <laughs> before I go over my 10 minutes slot. What, what, what Paul is, is, is giving us here is, is really, I call it the antidote against anxiety. Okay, he, he tells us that he has learned the secret of being content in all circumstances, whether it's going well or good or bad, whether you're happy, whether you're in a, in a, in a season where you're blessed in abundance, whether you're in, in need. He has really learned to be content in those circumstances. First, we're going to look at the word anxious, which in Greek means merimnau. And merimnau means it's a distraction, a distracted mind or a double mind. In the broader context, this division or divided loyalty is between God's kingdom and my own. What does this mean? It means when we are anxious, it separates, it separates us from God, because our focus is not on God. That's, That's why we always need to seek first the kingdom of God, meaning putting God first. He's the center of our world. He is in control, knowing He is faithful, and that He will supply all our needs. Let's look at Matthew 6.33. But first seek His kingdom and all His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. But now listen to this. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day. Not every other day. Not Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Each day. Jesus warns us each day is going to have trouble of its own. And when we fail to see God's kingdom first... We're going, We're going to be anxious, anxious every, every single, single day, day because every single day there will be trouble. But Paul, he comes and he says, but hang on, I've got an antidote. I've got a formula. Because what will happen when we, when we stay in this conscious or this constant state of anxiousness, we're going to be filled with fear and unease and Distress. We're going to be miserable. It's going to, we're going to end up being in a downward spiral of literally feeling miserable every single day. Like poison. Anxious poisons our mind. So what is the antidote that Paul is talking about here. Obviously, Obviously prayer, prayer and petition and thanksgiving, but there's a secret ingredient, like any perfect Omar recipe, there's always that secret ingredient that we need. <laughs> We're going to look at prayer and the Greek word for press in this specific context is, I hope I am pronouncing it correctly, prosukumai, which means to pray to God, to supplicate, to worship, and to ask. And when you break this up in two nouns, we get pro and yukumai. Pro means preposition of direction. It actually means going directly to God. Coming face to face with God. Yukumai means to wish. So we make our wishes known to God. And this give us this this is giving us prayer of petition. Where we communicate communicate with God, asking him for something. 
Why should we ask God for something? Why should we make our requests known to Him? Because He forgot? No. God knows everything. The reason why we make our requests known to God is to remind us that we need Him. It's to remind us that we are dependent on God. And we're not going to make a list and demand God, I want this and that. No, we humbly approach God. We humbly approach God, giving Him thanks, giving Him praise because of who He is. And because of that, it doesn't matter the outcome of, of the answer. We know that it will always end up to the glory of God. We know that it will always be in our best interest because God is always working everything together for our good. But now we're not just going to not focus on, on being anxious. We're not just going to pray with petition. We are going to be thankful, thanksgiving. But this is a different thanksgiving. This thanksgiving is a Eucharist thanksgiving to glorify God as an act of worship, giving thanks for all things as part of God's providence. What happens when we start giving thanks to God? What happens when our focus is directed to God? When we give Him praise, we are reminded of who He is, He is the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is my provider. He is my healer. He is my comforter. He is Yahweh. And what happens now? All your worries that you just had a few seconds ago suddenly seem so small. It starts fading away. It simply means that we must worship and glorify God. According to the Bible, this is where the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, starts happening. It's the harmony and calmness of body, mind, and spirit. But listen to this. Trusting in the power and grace of God. Trusting in the power and grace of God. So, Ruzan, what is this secret formula? What is this secret ingredient? Let's go back to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. The secret ingredient is rejoice. Rejoice is a f that we are favorably disposed to God's grace. Huh? How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that that we... Every single day, receive grace. We have grace every single day. We don't even have to work for it. And once again, just like thanksgiving and prayer, it's an action. Rejoicing is an action. It's not a feeling. It's a choice to rejoice frequently. For frequently, it goes against how we feel. It does not mean you deny feeling despair and sadness or grief. I mean, I mean, Paul was sitting in a Roman prison, prison <laughs> writing this to remind us that in every situation, in any circumstance, we should always show great delight and joy in the grace given to us through Christ. We rejoice because of who God is. We rejoice because of our salvation. There's a reason why do not be anxious or do not worry appears 17 times in the New Testament. Some of you don't even know it, and I'm a newbie with this, believe it or not. Do not fear appears 366 times in the Bible. Why? Because every single day God is telling us, do not fear, do not worry. My grace is sufficient to you, according to 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. My grace is sufficient to you. Because God chooses to display His power in us by sustaining us in our weakness. 
church, this morning I want to tell you really not to be anxious about anything. Because of who God is. Because of, because of His grace. Because of His love. We know that He's always working everything together for our good. I pray that you will really exit 2022 with a grateful heart. Enter 2023 with rejoicing and praise, knowing that God is in control. doesn't matter what your circumstances look like this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know, maybe you are sad, but for me, I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Pastor Johan, I'm happy to see you. Yeah, we are all happy to see you. And it's a privilege that we find ourselves in the house of the Lord because there are so many people who want to come to church today, but they were not able to make it. So when you find yourself in the house of the Lord, you must be grateful. This morning, I just want you to lift up your hands in a minute and just speak to the Lord. Speak to the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Speak to the Lord. Speak to your Father just in a minute. Open your mouth with a loud voice. Speak unto the Lord. Father, thank you. Le talaba sataya dalabo sataya daba. Le credo sate prahados kipilihinda. Ma kadaba hado soto prehededos. Re kedos satahandu brahadas. Le brakato suprema kuta prahandi. Le ndabra hasoko pelehando satapala. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, this morning we thank you. Let your word as it come forth, Father, let it be a healing in our body, our soul, in our mind, in the mighty name of Jesus. At the mention of your name, let every knee bow and let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, is the King of kings, he is our Savior, he is our Master, he is our Healer, he is our Protector, he is our Provider. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Are you here in the house of the Lord? Put your hands together for the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This morning, I will be speaking about a subject. Delilah. Delilah. Are you here? Delilah. And I think since I said Delilah, your mind just went far. No, don't be scared. Yeah, you don't have to. So I'm speaking about a personality called Delilah. Delilah is a spirit. Delilah is a spirit. It's not just a name. Are you here with me? Delilah is a spirit. And why am I saying Delilah is a spirit? Delilah is a spirit because any bad habit that you cannot stop is Delilah. Are you there? Pastor John, please, uh, I think you must help me there. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Any bad habit that you cannot stop is Delilah. Why am I saying so? We'll find out from Judges chapter 16, verse 16 to 19. That's where we take our first reading. Judges 16, verse 16 to 19. Yeah. She kept on asking him day after day. He got so sick and tired of her nagging him about it mm. that he finally told her the truth. Mm. My hair has never been cut, he said. I have been dedicated to God as a Nazarite from the time I was born. If my, wear, if my hair were cut, I would lose my strength and be as weak as anybody else. Amen. 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 So, you are not an any ordinary man. You are not an ordinary person because Samson said, if my hair, is, my hair is cut, I will tend to be any other man. 
Meanwhile, you, the, the Lord created you. You were born with a vision. You were born with a talent. You were born with God's presence in you. Hallelujah. But remember, before Samson met Delilah, Samson met two other women before Delilah. Samson met the first woman. Nothing happened. He met a prostitute. He was saved. But the third woman Samson met was Delilah. And Delilah was going for the potential in Samson. Delilah came in for a target. This morning, I don't know what the Lord has given you. You yourself, you know. You know your gift. You know your talent. You know what makes you happy. You know what brings the anointing of God anytime you are in that mood. You know it. But I just want to encourage you this morning that anything that you find yourself doing and when that thing happens, you don't feel comfortable. It's a Delilah. And this morning, as believers, as Christians, as the year is going to an end, I will encourage us that we must put a measurement on our life. Let's cross-check our life. The things that, when it comes up, then our body, we can't control ourselves. The first thing I name here is smoking. 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 Smoking can be Delilah for you, but not for me. Alcohol can be Delilah for me, but not for you. Anger can be Delilah. Hallelujah. Hatred can be Delilah. Lies can be Delilah. I remember a lady that was in my previous church uh, spoke to me about somebody in the church and she, when she was speaking to me she said she think so meaning that she's not sure you see and then as time goes on this lady was still saying the same thing and then now it tends to be like the thing was happening you know she was protecting the lie and then now the lie is something that she's focusing on and she can't even turn back so sometimes, as Christians, you gossiping or lying can be Delilah in your life that you will live for years protecting the same life for ages. Hallelujah. So this morning, I just want to encourage us that we must go deep into our heart and search ourselves. You can identify the Delilah in your life. I can't identify for you. When you identify that Delilah, now you must work on it. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm using these three big men in the Bible for us to see because Samson was a powerful man that the Lord gave him power to fight, power to stand for the children of God. But because of the lifestyle that Samson was having, he was not able to proceed as the Lord wanted him to. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 to 17. 2 Samuel 11, verse 1 to 17. Okay. I'll start from verse 2. One day late in the afternoon, David got up from his nap and mm. went to the palace roof. Mm. As he walked about up there, he saw a woman having a bath. She was very beautiful. So he sent a messenger to find out who she was and learned that she was Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Amen. 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 Because, because of time. David was carrying the power of God. We all know David. David was the one who killed Goliath. He was having a lot of potential. But the Delilah in David was women. David can't hold himself. Whatever he sees, he feels that he has to go for it. That was the Delilah in David. So this morning, I asked a question. If Samson can fall because of the Delilah he have, if David can fall because of Delilah, which is a woman, what do you think can make you fall? You know the answer. I don't know. 
but I have my own Delilah that I'm working on. I remember the time I was like 16 years ago. Uh, I felt that I used to have this anger that when it comes, I don't know, I behave funny. So I took it upon myself. One day I went to the church alone. I opened the church. I went there and then I spoke to the Lord. The Lord, you must touch my heart. Because I used to, when you do something against me, I can stay for a week, two weeks, just planning, I mean, the way I'll come back and hit you hard. You know? So, <laughs> it, it was funny, but it was a serious thing I was going through. Yeah, it was a serious thing I was going through. So, after that prayer, I felt that something left me. But, the truth of the matter is, when, when I, I, I finished that, that prayer, prayer, from, from that, that day, a lot of people will come into my life. They will do things that will provoke me. Then I realized that, no, I think Delilah wants to come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> hallelujah. So what I'm trying to say is that you know the Delilah in your life. And don't overlook. Don't. Because that is what the enemy wants to use in your life to bring you down. Don't, Don't overlook what Delilah is saying. Don't. The Bible said we must open, we must watch and pray. And then the Bible said iron sharpens iron. So we must always focus on what we are doing. What is going on in our life, we must not overlook. We need to check our life. Hallelujah. Because the Bible said when Jesus came from the mountain after the prayers, the first person who came up was the devil. And he came to tempt him. He was not afraid of him, that is the son of God. He was not afraid of him. He came to him and decided to ask the Lord what he can say to him. Hallelujah. I will jump to the lessons. I have some few lessons that I have written here in the verses that we've studied so far. You know, something. The lesson that we can use in our life, Samson. You study that Samson was powerful, but he was not having friends. And I'm scared for people who are clever, but they don't have friends around them. I'm not just talking about a friend, a good friend. Because when you have a good friend around you, that friend can point you and say that, no, what you are doing, it will bring a disaster. So, if you are talented, if you have the gift of God, it's very important. The Bible said we must not walk alone. Hallelujah. So, this morning, as you live here, from today to next year, make sure that the friends that you have, you must take a look. Maybe there are some changes you need to make. Hallelujah. The second person I would like to speak about is David. Besides all the talent David has, he was not able to stop the things that was happening to him because David went ahead and killed the man he slept with the wife. Imagine. You took somebody's wife, you didn't realize that what you were doing was wrong, but you went further and killed the man. So sometimes the dilemma that we have in us, if we don't check and we don't control, it will push us to the world that will do something we are not expecting to do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Saul was a powerful man of God. And what happened to Saul? The Bible said, because of impatience. Saul was supposed to wait for the man of God, the prophet, so that the prophet will leave the incense and bend before the Lord. But because Saul was impatient, he decided that, no, since the man of God is not coming, I'm also a child of God, I will just do it. We are all children of God. Which is not true. The Bible said, obedience is better than sacrifice. This morning, as you leave the church, remember that you have to check your life. Check the friends that you have. If you, if you think, think that Delilah is, is drinking, that is in your life, 
then you must uh, uh, you must associate yourself to people who are not drinking. Praise the Lord. If you think that you are somebody that you are diplomatic, you I mean you always say your mind. You can't control yourself. Then you need to associate yourself to somebody who is sanguine, somebody who is calm, so that you can balance yourself. Are you here with me? So these are the examples I can give you this morning. Just sit down for a minute, check yourself. You know, you know, as I said, man, I'm not even struggling with it anymore. So you must also check yours and then try to work on it. Let's close our eyes and pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Your word is here to hear. Your, he your word is here to impart your spirit in our lives. Father, we come before you. You know our weakness. You know the things we want to do, but we are not able to do. So, Father, this morning, search our hearts and heal us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any Delilah in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our spirit, in the name of Jesus, because of your blood, we are here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Patrick, for that powerful message. Um, Yo, it gets you thinking. <laughs> Good morning, Mangbanani Akanaka Baruch Church. <laughs> So, when I was asked to do the 4.9 again, I actually already had something that I prepared for a while ago. But then, the Holy Spirit laid something else on my heart. This is a topic that I'm very passionate about. So, why wouldn't I want to share it with my brothers and sisters in Christ? So, I hope I can paint a beautiful picture for you this morning. If we can just get the images up there. I want to start from the very beginning. I'm going to read from Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. This account goes on to describe the seven days of creation. In the beginning, God started creation. The first day, light was created. The second day, the sky was created. The third day, the dry land, seas, plants, and trees were created. The fourth day, the sun, the moon, and the stars were created. The fifth day, creatures that live in the sea and creatures that fly were created. The sixth day, animals that live on land and finally humans made in the image of God were created. And then by the seventh day, God finished his work of creation and rested, making the seventh day a special day, a special holy day. Furthermore, in Genesis 1, verse 31, Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. All of God's creation was very good. And Deuteronomy 10, verse 14, further confirms all of God, God's creations belongs to the Lord. Look, the highest heavens and the earth, and everything in it all belong to the Lord, your God. The creation of land, water, and sky, and heavens out of nothing, was miraculous. But what was even more spectacular was the creation of life. Creation is solely an act of God. It's not by accident. It's no mistake. But it's the self-expression of God. God spoke the earth and heavens into existence from nothing. 
Now, Now, even even though though it only says says that that God breathed life into man, it doesn't doesn't mean that it's it's not the same for the rest of his creations. We speak on exhalation. God breathes life into all of his creations. The same breath that is inside of us is the same breath of life that is in the rest of his creations. We show our respect by... Taking seriously our stewardship of God's creations. Taking care of his creation was one of mankind's first jobs. As it says in Genesis 2 verse 15. And because God is the creator, we as members of humanity have the duty to take care of his creation. The preservation of the earth, the vegetation, and all its inhabitants It's our responsibility to take care of. In Isaiah 24, verse 5, it was written, The earth suffers for the sins of its people, for they have twisted God's instructions, violated his laws, and broken his everlasting covenant. This prophecy is not specifically speaking about the enactment of environmental laws. The preservation and responsible use of our environment are important to pursue, but the Earth's environmental well-being will ultimately be destroyed because of its inhabitants' sins, bloodshed from wars, cruelty against mankind, and sinful hypocrisy will spoil the Earth. We are to treasure God's Word and His teachings. Just as we are to take care of God's earthly creations. Consider Luke 12, verse 32, when Jesus spoke, A faithful, sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. Okay, in his commentary, John Gill wrote, Such are stewards in Christ's family. They are entrusted with the stores and provisions of his house, and faithfulness and wisdom are requisite in them. The one that they do not corrupt and adulterate the word of God and mix it with human doctrines, but that they deliver it out pure and sincere as it is, and the other that they may rightly divide it and wisely distribute it. Now, I have started watching near-death experience um, videos on YouTube. To me, it's soothing to listen to each person's experience, and it's a comfort feeling of knowing that Jesus really is real. The one lady had an experience where she went to heaven and she saw Jesus. Yeshua said to her, it was his glory to die for the entire world. He imbued the importance of having compassion for every living creation of God, having respect and honor towards nature and animals. It was a very deep message of love and compassion. I immediately started crying when I heard the specific part. Now, I've always wondered why I have this deep connection with nature and all living creatures. It is because we were created to have love and compassion towards God's creations. And hearing this specific message made things so much more understanding to me. I want to end off with this verse from Nehemiah 9, verse 6. You alone are the Lord. You made the skies and the heavens and all the stars. You made the earth and the seas and everything in them. You preserved them all. And the angels of heaven worship you. Worship is something we do. It does something to us. For all of God's purposes, worship is where we come together, unified in the body of Christ, to celebrate what God has done for us. In worship, we offer our praise. We also experience the presence of God. And we receive communication from Him. For those of you who know me on a more personal level will know just how deep my connection with nature goes. 
To me, when I'm standing in nature, surrounded by all of God's creations, I just feel so much closer to Him. I always envision myself standing in the middle of the career, underneath the stars and the moon, and just worshipping God, and giving all the glory to Him, to the one true Yahweh who created us, who created the mountains, the stars, the oceans, the animals, and the list just goes on. I want to leave you with this, this morning. God is all around us. We see Him in every creation that He has created. We see Him in the breathtaking skies when it's the sunset. We hear Him in the morning when the birds are singing. In the howling winds, the roaring oceans, the mesmerizing mountains. So why wouldn't we want to take care of it all? If creation sings his praises, so will I. If all nature follows his voice, so will I. If the stars were meant to worship, so will I. And if nature still obeys, obeys him, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the ocean roars his greatness, so will I. If everything exists to lift him high, so will I. If the wind goes where he sends it, so will I. If the rocks cries out in silence, so will I. Thank you.